Greetings, citizens! The hero of heroes, champion of champions, and lover of lovers. Just a guy has arrived! Today, I'm going to be talking about the hit sequel to everyone's favorite childhood anime that has everyone talking about what color the main character's hair will turn into next. That's right, just a boys and just a girls. It's time to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains! And... and... Wait. 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 This? This is what they're doing with... This? This is... Really? Oh, alright then, that's enough awkward ice breaking for one video, I think. You've read the title, and if the ice isn't broken out, I don't think it ever will be, so let's just jump right into this. As the universal survival arc of Dragon Ball Super finally gets down to business, more and more exciting bits of info has begun to finally make its way to our eager eyes and ears. Naturally, most fans are more than happy to take in this new info as we await each and every new episode of the series' newest installment with bated breath. Now... Years after the tantalizing idea of other gods of destruction seemed like nothing more than a fleeting dream to egg Goku's training on, as Lord Beerus teased it at the end of Battle of Gods, we are able to take in the designs and names of all twelve of them together. I've gotta say, though, when you look at some of these all lined up like this, some of these designs seem to stand out a little more than the others, don't you think? I mean, for one thing, can you believe the nerve of this guy? Didn't you get the memo about the dress code? I can understand the goddess over here needing something up top, but if they're all going to be wearing the same outfit, I'd at least like them all to be topless when they can be. Thank you very much. What? Don't, don't look at me like that. You're the one who opened this video about character designs. What'd you think we'd be talking about here, this guy? Now, <clears throat> that's for if and or when I decide to make some JoJo videos. God, just look at that. Oh, Morio, you are truly a place. Uh, oh, oh, I am. I am so sorry. Where, where was I? Ah, ah, right, right. <clears throat> In all seriousness, uh, looking at these designs, a few things stand out to me about them. In fact, the more I look at them, I think you can make a pretty good guess as to where this tournament might be going, based just on the designs of the gods of destruction alone. However... Before I get too far ahead of myself, for now, let's just go back to these designs here. Let's just look at the new ones here. Really look at them for just a second. Picture these designs being made into toys. Imagine them being playable characters in a game like Budokai or Xenoverse. Not just appearing in those games, but actually on the battlefield, being playable characters in those games. It's kind of hard to do for some of them, isn't it? You see, with quite a few of the new designs Super has added, it becomes pretty easy to figure out the role of the character with just a look at him. This is especially true with some of the new characters that have smaller roles. And it makes sense when you think about it. You wouldn't put as much thought into a bit character, and you would want their design to help them be remembered for who they are and what they are and what they do. Well, alright, I might be being more than a little presumptuous, saying not a lot of thought goes into these designs, because that... I actually don't necessarily agree with that. Rather, it might be more appropriate to say that these designs are simpler and easier to understand at a glance. And for better or worse, this makes sense. If a character's role can be summed up in one sentence, then you can use their design to add to that when you think about it. The problem is, when you get designs like this repeatedly, it starts to make things a little too predictable. Or at least, that's part of my argument here today anyway. However you feel about it, I believe that this has been an issue that's persisted throughout Dragon Ball Super from the moment it started introducing original characters. So, before we really crack down and analyze the designs of all of these new gods of destruction, let's take a look at the rest of the new designs that Dragon Ball Super has added to the franchise. To get this started, we're going to jump way back to the first original arc of Super, the one that began shortly after the show's adaptation of Resurrection F finished up. Remember way back when we were first introduced to Universe 6's team? Back when Beerus and Champa set their little tournament up to decide the fate of the Earth and who would get to make a wish on the Super Dragon Balls? In order, the team consisted of Bottomo, Frost, Mageta, Kaba, or Kabe, depending on who you ask, and then Hit. 
Now this is a little known fact, but these five characters can also be known by their other names. Gigantic Winnie the Pooh, Blue Frieza, definitely not a Tarble stand-in, the Iron Giant, an obviously important new character. I mean, look, I like these characters, don't get me wrong, but you could still tell right away before any of the fights started, and then they, you know, went ahead and made it very clear who the important one was. Which characters of the bunch would be the most relevant? So let's just, you know, go in order here. Did Gigantic Winnie the Pooh use his body to fight? You bet your sweet ass he did. After trying super duper hard to make it a really big deal and plot twist right after they brought Frieza back to life, did Blue Frieza just end up being Frieza again? Oh, you bet he did. Oh, but thank goodness for definitely not a terrible stand, and thank goodness he was here to not have a connection with Vegeta and to not be a weaker, slimmer Saiyan to contrast with ours. Thank goodness for definitely not a terrible stand, and thank goodness for him. And that they followed this up with the Iron Giant? I love that. I love that movie as a kid, and just watching him, you know, be there, acting like a robot, talking like a robot, fighting like a robot, which he was you know, walking around like a robot, that was great, I really appreciated that, you know, that he was literally just a robot, and do I really need to say anything about obviously important character? Look, we can split hairs on some of the details here, and I know this is the internet, so some people may not realize a little of that was hyperbole, but regardless, you know, the only thing I can say about this Universe 6 team, besides Hit anyway, is that the real plot twist with Frost would have been if that he had genuinely been nice. That's all I can say with them. I think it's fair to say that by the end of the Universe 6 arc, the character that we're supposed to remember and feel good about, feel like we want to see more of them, is supposed to be Hit. And when you get down to it, I think that's something we could all tell as soon as we saw that team lining up in the very first episode of that arc. And that is where we have to wonder, was this even worth watching? Should I have just tuned out up until this one character showed up? Should I have ignored everything up until the one character that they clearly wanted me to care about finally took the stage? Well, maybe we're getting a little too meta here. So, while you guys think about that, I'm gonna get to the next arc. Ready? Let's go. Now, with the tournament out of the way, we could begin the Future Trunks and Goku Black arc. Besides Perfusions and One Note Alien and Human characters, the only major characters that were actually introduced in this arc were Zamas and Goas. And because Goku Black only required giving Goku a new wardrobe, this just leaves us with the designs of the two new Supreme Kais of Universe 10 to look at. And though you wouldn't think so at first, this arc was actually pretty similar to the last one in terms of its new character designs. Its similarities are just in the opposite direction. Just looking at them, I think you can really tell that the way Zamas and Goas are designed compared to not only Universe 6's chubby old Supreme Kais, but the Universe 6 team as a whole, speaks a great deal about the kind of effort and thought that went into designing these two characters. In short, these were two characters that were meant to have a much bigger impact. Yes, even Goas. But before we talk about the Elder Supreme Kai, let's talk about his devilishly handsome, wink wink, apprentice, shall we? As soon as we meet him, we can see that Zamasa's stature is much more similar to fighters we've come to know rather than that of the Supreme Kai's we've come to know. No, he's not huge with hulking muscles, and he's not wearing a gear or anything, but he's not tiny little guy like our Supreme Kai, or a little fat one like Universe 6's Supreme Kai's. Add in a unique skin color that still, you know, is pretty Kai, and an outfit that may or may not foreshadow some things, and you've got Zamas. These are elements that allow Zamas to feel like a unique character right away without having to resort to exaggerations or drastic differences, which is how Universe 6's Supreme Kai's and apparently Saiyan's differentiate themselves from ours, as far as we know anyway. This approach to character design also makes it more difficult to figure out what kind of personality he has just based on what he looks like. These are aspects of character design that I believe Zamas has in common with not only Hit, but if we go back a little further, Lord Beerus and Whis. Meanwhile, unlike Dragon Ball's previous Elder Supreme Kai, Goas was given a much less exaggerated design. You could still tell that he was an Older Supreme Kai, but he was just that, an Older Supreme Kai. That wasn't who he was, that was just a thing that he happened to be, in addition to Zamasa's mentor, and so on. Even though these two characters possess a striking similarity to other characters in the Dragon Ball universe, these two are excellent examples of Dragon Ball Super's design direction when you compare them to others. While the designs from the last arc had an almost immediate feeling of predictability alongside them, Zamas and Goas' designs don't necessarily bring that. 
Now, that isn't to say that you couldn't kind of guess where things were going to go based on these designs. But I'm not necessarily saying you couldn't. Just that it was not nearly as bad as it was in the last arc. So I think I'd better remind you of something before we go any further. Remember, this is just a prologue to our discussion about all the new gods of destruction. A group of characters who right now we know very little about. With that in mind, do you really think that you'd be able to figure out Zamas just based on his design, without any knowledge of that mystery that was building him up? I don't know, maybe you would. That's what we're here to talk about. And taking in the designs of Zamas and Gwas on their own, Zamas had to be more than just the young and handsome Kai that was there to contrast with the older Kai that he was introduced with. They had to give us more than what their simpler designs told us at a glance. And boy, did they! Zamas, especially. Not to jump ahead too early, but this is pretty similar to the more recently introduced Supreme Kai of Universe 9, who was playing a surprisingly active role in the exhibition match prior to the Tournament of Power. He, too, is a Supreme Kai that can't just be defined simply by being what we've known to be as a Supreme Kai, and I, for one, am loving it. Comparing these to some of the other new characters that Super has given us, like big clunky robot that can't articulate things well, can't fly, and fights like a robot, or a big Winnie the Pooh character that can't fly, fights by using its big size, and doesn't really have much personality, you can really see the difference. But the question remains, what about all of the new Gods of Destruction? Unlike the other characters we've been talking about here, we are not able to use hindsight with them. And so sure, while it may seem like it was totally obvious that the big fat guy would fight like a big fat guy now, and that the big robot would fight like a big robot now, Maybe when these things were happening, it might not have been as obvious. Maybe. Maybe. But you know what, guys? With all of this in mind, I think it's time to finally put everything we've been talking about together and end the video. If you enjoyed the video, or even if you hated it, please let me know so I know how I'm doing and how I can improve. I'm a new YouTuber, and I'd really appreciate that. This video's follow-up will focus solely on the brand new Gods of Destruction in the Universal Survival Arc, and it will be up soon. In the meantime, citizens, if you could like, comment, subscribe, or tell me why you're not doing those things, that actually would be even better for me right now. I would really appreciate it. And in the meantime, this is Just a Guy, blasting off. Fair